Hello, I'm Atu Jamir and you're watching Hornbill TV's Prime at Night. The peace talks between the Centre and the National Socialist Council of Nagaland, Isaac Muiva and SCNIM that was ske scheduled to take place today in Delhi based on the framework agreement signed on August 3, 2015 has been postponed. As per sources, the meeting is likely to take place on September 21st. Then SCNIM had agreed to resume peace talks with the Centre following a meeting between 11 representatives of the extremist group and the 22-member core committee on Naga political issue comprising MPs and MLAs of Nagaland at Chubuketima near Nagaland's commercial hub Dimapur, September 17, 2022. On September 17, members of the core committee and delegates from the NSCNIM met for two hours in Chubuketima and the meeting was held after the centre asked the core panel led by Chief Minister Nipurio to convince the outfit to resume peace talks and reach a final solution. The union government has been holding two separate barrelies with the NSCNIM since 1997 and the Naga National Political Groups, comprising seven organizations since 2017. The center signed a framework agreement with the NSCNIM on August 3, 2015 and also entered into an agreed position with NNPGs in December 2017. On the NSCNIM discontinuing negotiations since May, Ziliang said they are not happy with interlocutor A.K. Mishra of the omission of some of the politically important points which were included in the formulation paper submitted by former interlocutor N.N. Ravi. The NSCNIM has told the core committee that the outfit would resume peace talks if it is based on the framework agreement and on the formulation paper submitted by Ravi and the center's current interlocutor A.K. Mishra, the UDA chairman said. Ziliang clarified that the core committee's role as a facilitator remains unchanged, adding things are working out and we hope that the talks will resume very soon. RH Rising, a member of NSCNIM leadership, told reporters that the team of the outfit will soon leave for Delhi to hold parallels with the centre. The framework agreement signed between the centre and NSCNIM came after over 80 rounds of negotiations since a ceasefire pact was sealed in 1997 after decades of insurgency which started in Nagaland soon after independence in 1947. Police and administrative authorities and community members of Newland District are searching for a member of the 13th NAPIR, a Koi, who is said to have gone missing on September 17 from the camp. The Deputy Commissioner of Police Crime of Dimapur issued a note on September 20, stating that on September 18, a missing FIR was received at Newland Police Station that Yampon Thang and Tungoi of the IR posted at Newland Town had gone missing on the 17th from the Newland 13th NAPIR camp. He was last seen wearing a black track band, a dark blue t-shirt and a black cap, the note stated. According to identification particulars listed in the police's note, the policeman is 28 years old and son of Enzio Tongoi of Old Rimpium in Woka district. He is 5'4 feet and is of fair complexion. He has a mole on the right side of the neck, the note added. Sources also informed that the missing person's mobile connection was active but there was no response from his site. To get more details, Hornbill TV spoke to DCP Crime Dimapur, Bharat Lakshman. Yeah, see on date 17th of September, around 10 a.m., uh, one Jawan, a constable Yampotam Tunge of 13 NAP IR, a company, was found missing from his post and uh, accordingly the missing person report was received at Newland Police Station. So after uh, receiving the report, all the police personnel along with the IRV personnel, they conducted search operation on deck 17. Yes, sir. And since we are talking on air and uh, 
so that i can uh, if it helps also you was last seen wearing uh, one black cap dark blue vest one ash colored crop sandal okay. if anyone of your viewers also if they might have noticed some person they may contact the uh, pro or oc newland of the the uh, dimapur commissariat okay and also uh, we are very uh, thankful to the public of the newland area on 18th all the gaur gudas uh, from newland area along with the police personnel and our rdo civil uh, co-hoto range we had a joint search operation it was not successful even uh, today also around 500 people uh, with 15 villages falling under newland town area uh, they went for such operation whole day yes. they are not uh, got any success as of now but yeah, our efforts are continuing so maybe now uh, if you were missing from the camp or from the uh, place where you were posted for his duty sir uh or at the time of uh, at the time when he went missing he was not on duty okay uh, but his place of posting is right now in newland yes sir yeah so he was his place of posting is newland and he went missing from newland town but not uh, that particular moment he was not on duty so you also know uh, when was the fire filed and uh, the as you said the search operation started from the 17th itself right sir yes correct yes sir missing person yes sir we received on date 17th only okay sir and yeah our search first search operation uh, combined search operation by uh, uh, dimapur police and uh, irv personnel was conducted on date 17th only okay sir so is it only uh, from newland itself or uh yeah the missing person basically uh, uh, he is from woka district okay sir uh, from uh, rifim village uh, and he belongs to 13th nap ir alpha company okay sir the newland area gbs association also carried out an extensive search operation today where villagers from about 20 villages under the newland district participated where all the citizens above 15 years of age were directed to participate in the search operation आज भी पूरा बिहार से तो होल न्यूलन एरिया विलेज ना इंक्लूडिंग न्यूलन टाउन तो होल पब्लिक बिहार से आर एम पुलिस और लोथा लोथा कम्यूनिटी टाइन लाखान खान ये सब मिले ना एक लोगे पूरा होल न्यूलन एरिया ना एप्रोक्सीमेटली ना If people have any information they are requested to contact the officer in charge of Newland Police Station at the number 7085055025Minister of State for Social Justice and Empowerment Pratima Bhomik visited Kifriya district on September 20. During her visit the minister met with heads of departments of Kifriya district and civil organizations. Minister said the country cannot progress without taking its district into account. She said there is a huge potential in the district if proper transportation facilities are built. Some avenues such as piggery, mushroom farming, fishery and handloom and traditional attire have commercial potential in this digital age for all this to come true she believes that proper training should be given to the stakeholders in their respective fields
सब लोगों को बैक टू बैक उसको सुविधा मिले और एक चीज अमृत स्वरूप के लिए मैंने बोला उसका भी अच्छे तरीके से जितना ज्यादा हो सके सेवेंटी फाइव करने के लिए बोला जितना हो सके उसका करिए और जो हमारा दिव्यांग भाई बहन जो मैंने पहले भी बोला तो पूरा में ऐसा किया है दूसरा स्टेट में भी उसको रेप्लिका हम उसको एडोप्ट कर रहे हैं जो आंगनबाड़ी बहनों को एक पेपर पकड़ के देना है ट्वेंटी वन डिसिप्लिन है डिसबिलिटी का पहले सेवन था मोदी जी उसको दो हजार चौदह पंद्रह में आके उसको ट्वेंटी वन किया है उसको पेपर लेके जाएगा जो जैसा डिजिटल है उसको टिक पर करके देना है तो उसके साथ हम लोगों ने डॉक्टर को लेके कैप करके उसको सर्टिफिकेट दे सकते हैं उसका एप्लाइंसेस दे सकते हैं उसका जो भी सुविधा चाहिए ऐसे दिव्यांगजन निःशुल्क होता है कोई विकल्प सेक्शन में है उसको सेवा हम दे सकते उसको हम लोगों ने आपका सुविधा दे सकते हैं उसका भगवान का आशीर्वाद गॉड का आशीर्वाद डायरेक्ट मिलेगा मैं ऐसा the government of nagaland has undertaken an exercise to face out at ad hoc and contingency appointments according to chief minister nipurio he was addressing the 12th session of the 13th nagaland legislative assembly on tuesday really with the time 10 past 11 now the start question number 14 i also feel it is a pertinent question um, i would like to give five minutes uh, to the initiate you of the question and thereafter i will enter the house since this is the last question for today we touch you you may take time mr speaker sir thank you for this extra minute that we have extended but this is a matter which concerns everybody So there is nothing loss in extending the time. In fact, this should be the <coughs> way forward. So we are aware that uh, our state, though we proudly claim that we are the 16 states, but in real developmental activities. Nagaland has been lagging far behind. There was a time where railways will be extended from Nagaland to Impal, but today Nagaland is nowhere to be seen. And whereas the railways has reached Impal, it is going beyond from Impal to the international border. And here we are still stuck. Yes, the few days ago, our honourable chief minister has inaugurated one station, and we were so happy that after a hundred years, another station was inaugurated. That was a proud moment for us. But it's so painful to think that after a hundred years, we need to get another station. And today, more or less every state capital in India are having railway stations, railway coming to their state capital. But particularly here in Nagaland, for us, we're always taking pity issues, quarrelling. But what is a common objective? We find very less participation from the general public. We just had a discussion with the foreign issues, and the same thing is with the railways issues also. My only concern here is, since we have a department with such a in charge transport. Responding to a question raised by MLA Ritachu on the government's policy to resolve ad hoc and contingency appointments attaining retirement, Rio said on Tuesday that the question of such a policy does not arise as ad hoc and contingency appointments are by their very nature temporary. No policy is therefore required to provide on their attaining retirement age, he added in the written reply. It is a risk. 
to all of us who used to take a plane, I mean from the Mako. So I, I hope that will be resolved. There is going to be a court case, last hearing this month, and I hope things will be resolved. And I'm happy that the department is pursuing to resolve this issue and also see the sport manufacturer. In those 22 names, some, I don't know whether it's all, but majority of them, they got land allotments somewhere else. The location is different. But because the empty land is there, they came and occupied them. Actually, that location is not the allotted land. The allotted place was somewhere else, but they forcibly occupied. And now, they are blaming on a person that, who died? Who died? So, the court hearing, all those evidences will come and we hope will resolve. When I met the railway minister this time, I took up the issue of railway from Dimapur to Dizit. Because the railway minister during 2011-12, the minister had announced in her budget and then they had already, the railway board had already approved and recorded in the pink book. And therefore every year a token money is given. But because of our failure of Foothill Road, where the villagers were generously donated their land for construction of Foothill Road. We are very grateful to them. They will take only the property damage compensation, but not land compensation. And when we approached the railway ministry to immediately implement the Mapur Railway, the landowner said, you first construct the foothill road. Only then we will give no objection letter. And that's where we got stuck up. Ryu, who is also minister in charge of PNAR department, said the government is now trying to streamline a door can contingency appointments. In the long run, he said, the sanction post would be abolished and no due appointments would be made against that post as many such appointees are being paid without works and wasting state resources. The Nagaland government is trying to phase out those groups of people and this exercise will reduce a dog contingent appointments with the long-term goal of abolishing the system, he said. A total of 22 persons have been named in quarters of the Dimapu Airport during the 13th Nagaland Legislative Assembly session on Tuesday. Responding to a query raised by MLA Kuzuluzo Nina, the Minister in Charge of Transport, Civil Aviation and Railways, P. Pai Wong Konyak, furnished the names of the alleged encroachers and said that the state government is putting concerted efforts. No. Package 3 decide the words to him out, our planning minister has just stated. I'm also happy the entire government, the minister, they all have the concern for this case. The answer here is package 3, EOT has not been granted yet. Now I want to know the reason why EOT has not been granted. When package 1, 2 can be given EOT, second EOT also. Why not EOT being given? Because 
EOT is an area of concern as far as energy utilization is concerned. Here, Gaikis was awarded uh, the works in 2016. And then it was mentioned by the authorities, the NSIDCL, that terminated because of slow progress. Then extension of extension of time, I don't know whether they have asked for extension of time or no, but I think uh, there must be some justification. That is why the court the court has uh, given an order to terminate. There must be a reason. What do you see? Nina, the leader of the Naga People's Front Legislature Party, said the long-pending and serious issue of land encroachment at the Dimapu Airport was not a matter of land dispute but encroachment by 22 individuals. In response, Minister Konyak said the final meeting for the handing and taking over of the land from the SAM Rifles and CRPF will be conducted upon submission of the final joint survey report from the appropriate authority. The completion of the Dimapur Koima four lane project has been a subject in the question of both the government and the public for some time now. Today, at the 12th session of the 13th Nagaland Legislative Assembly in Kohima, leader of Naga People's Front, Kuzuluzo Nina, asked Chief Minister Nipurio, who also holds charge of national highways under the PWT, why work had come to a standstill and maintenance is not underway. In response, Rio revealed that some contractors are subletting work to local contractors where the percentage is decided upon. The contractors who sublet the projects are working with the main contractors and not with the government of Nagaland. Yeah. Gaikis was awarded uh, the works in 2016 and then it was mentioned by the authorities, the NSIDCL, that terminated because of slow progress. Then. Extension of, extension of time, I don't know whether they have asked for extension of time or no, but I think uh, there must be some justification. That is why the court, the court has uh, given an order to terminate. There must be a reason. What do you see? The government of Nagaland is at the mercy of the main contractors who were allotted the work, he said. In this connection, Planning and Coordination Minister Niba Krono added that it was time for all legislative members to come to the streets and monitor the progress. Leader of the Naga People's Front Legislative Party, Kuzuluzo Nina, has urged for resumption of exploration of petroleum in Nagaland. He spoke during the 12th session of the Nagaland Legislative Assembly, pointing to resuming oil exploration and production activities at the earliest. The legislator said that the special status that Nagaland enjoys under Article 371A of the Constitution of India has led to conflict between landowners, civil societies, the state government, oil companies and even the central government when it comes to oil and gas exploration and that this is causing undue interference and delays. Azo said, Naga elders had the wisdom to preserve the land's natural resources for the upcoming generation but today oil is no longer considered to be primary source of energy for the future. In order to bring changes in our society, in our state, 
for the betterment and also upliftment of our society. Mr. Speaker, sir, the urgent need of resuming oil exploration and production activities in the state is the need of the hour. Out of many reasons due to the paucity of time, I would like to cite three points for the honorable members of this other house to ponder upon. I would like to provoke my own thoughts as well as the honorable members' thoughts. Firstly, exploration of oil is a time-consuming process. In India, oil and gas blocks are awarded by the central government through DH, DGH, that is a Director General Hydrocarbon. And oil companies, after being awarded exploration blocks from GOI, makes an agreement for a committed work program. According to the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas, and as per the PSC provisions under new exploration license policy, Petroleum Exploration License is granted for a period of seven years in inland shallow water areas. I repeat, seven years in inland shallow water areas and eight years in deep water and frontier areas of exploration. Suppose we are to start the exploration. An indigenous people's front of Tripura MLA Prishka Tio de Bama has been disqualified from the state assembly for violating all the party norms. Ratan Chakrabot to the Speaker of Tripura Legislative Assembly, drawing a conclusion on the long pending issue on Tuesday, pronounced his order and disqualified the Barma from the post of Emily. The Barma last year snapped ties with the IPFT and formally joined Royal Section. Pradyot Kishore de Brahman led the IPRA Motha. Soon after he joined the IPRA, IPFT president filed an application with the Office of Tripura Legislative Assembly Speaker to disqualify the Barma as he has violated the party's constitutional norms. The matter was heard for over a year and the MLA was summoned to appear physically before the assembly that he disobeyed. The steady shouldered ball bearers who safely carried the Queen's coffin during her state funeral have won the hearts of the nation amid growing calls for the soldiers to be honored with medals. With the eyes of the world on them, the eight soldiers from the 1st Battalion, Grenadier Guards race and put down the Queen's 500 pound lead lined coffin no less than 10 minutes on her journey from Westminster Hall to St. George's Chapel in Windsor. The team, each of whom is required to be over six feet tall, did not put a foot wrong all day as first they shouldered her coffin with each soldier wearing rubber soled boots to avoid slipping on the highly polished stone floors. The uninvable task appeared more difficult as the Queen's crown orb and sceptre were balanced on top of her coffin. But as the soldiers held the coffin's brass handles. They walked in the knowledge that the lid had fitting to fix the jewels in a place. At one point, it appeared the flowers placed on the wreath atop the coffin began to wobble, but the pallbearers masterfully titled it just enough to secure the foliage without drawing any attention. Having faultlessly carried the coffin into Westminster Abbey as 2,000 esteemed guests from around the world watched the eight soldiers were called upon again as Her Majesty was transported by state here to Windsor Castle. The task of lifting the coffin up to steep straight stairs of the 450-year-old St. George's Chapel was nerve-wracking enough alone. But the unblemished performance throughout the emotional day had 
earned the praise of the nation with admirers across Britain, declaring, They have done our nation and Her Majesty proud. The pole bearers from the Grenadier Guards were all awarded the British Empire Medal for the service that did. Now, calls are growing for the eight soldiers to also be recognized for their role in the historic funeral yesterday. As Rahul Gandhi made a splash while participating in a snake boat race, even in Kerala, it is Parad Jolo Yatra, things were heating up within Congress ahead of the party's presidential polls. As many as seven state units have passed resolutions to bring back the Wayanat MP as the party chief. Even as the chorus grew louder for Rahul Gandhi to take over the reins of the Congress senior leader and MP Sashi Tharoor received Sonia Gandhi's OK to run for Congress chief on Monday. Congress presidential post after interim party chief Sonia Gandhi told Tharoor that anyone is free to contest the party polls and elections will be held according to the electoral process. However, the party workers are rallying behind Rahul Gandhi, who also has the backing of several state Congress units. Bharat Joro Yatra has brought the spotlight back on Rahul Gandhi, who is walking from Kanyakumari to Kashmir. Though the Gandhi Skion has maintained that he is just participating in Bharat Joro Yatra, the posters, banners and slogans tell a different tale, that for many, he is the face of the Yatra. The party is going through a crucial time. The only one name on which the entire party has a unanimous view, a sort of consensus candidate, is Rahul Gandhi. If anyone else contests, there will be a bitter election. D23 will file its candidate and the PJP as well as other opposition parties will get a chance to target Congress. A total of eight units, including Puducherry, have now passed resolutions seeking Rahul Gandhi at the helm of Congress affairs. Congress state units in Telangana, Delhi, Himachal Pradesh and Punjab are also discussing passing similar resolutions. Amid all this, Congress leader and general secretary in charge of parties communications, Jairam Ramesh, said anybody who wants to contest is free and welcome to do so. This has been the consistent position of Congress President and Rahul Gandhi. This is an open, democratic and transparent process. Nobody needs anybody's note to contest. The filing of nominations for the post of president begins in three days. The elections are being held amid a slew of resignations, with senior leaders Gulam Nabi Azad being the latest to snap ties with the Grand Old Party, blaming the leadership and lack of reforms. Guinness World Record for the fastest production car requires a two-way test that combines the average speed of each run. Konet CX Agura RS officially became the world's quickest production car in 2017 with its 277.8 miles per hour top speed. Bugatti's Chiron Super Sports 300 Plus and SSC's Tuatara are excluded from Guinness list despite exceeding the Konet CX Agura RS top speed. Bugatti's Chiron Super Sport 300 Plus was left out of Guinness record book since it was put through a unidirectional top speed run instead of two-way tests. The SSC Tuatara did not make Guinness cut since the vehicle is in street legal. Hennessy's Venom F5 targets 311 mph as the speed it wants to achieve to become the fastest production car. Hennessy's goal may very well come to pass thanks to the vehicle's 6.6-litre twin Tupo charge V8 engine producing 1,817 horsepower. Venom F5 production is limited to 29 examples, with most models already sold. A recent Day Lana's Garage episode showed the former late night host and musician Post Malone track testing a Venom F5. Before hitting the track, Malone said he was excited and terrified at the same time to drive the F5. The star rapper overcame his fears and got behind the wheels of the F5 after Leno ran a few laps. Malone executed smooth runs around the close course with Leno advising the star musician on how to handle braking and turns.
that's all we have for now. Keep watching on Will TV.